Hello, I'm Brian Walton, and I'm here to tell you about accumulation functions and the fundamental theorem of calculus. So first, just our learning goal, we want to be able to apply the fundamental theorem of calculus to compute derivatives of definite integrals where we involve variables in the limits of integration. Now, in order to understand how we're doing this, we first need to define an accumulation function. So an accumulation function is a function that returns the value of a definite integral, so here's the definite integral, where the lower limit is a constant, and the upper limit is the variable that corresponds to the input variable of the function. Inside of the integral there's a function, that function is the rate of accumulation. Now the fundamental theorem of calculus tells us that as long as the function in the integrand, the accumulation rate, is continuous on an interval containing the lower limit c. Then this function has a derivative that's equal to the integrand function evaluated at the input value x. In other words, every accumulation function is an antiderivative. So let's get to work. First, we're going to consider this problem we want to find the derivative of this definite integral where the lower limit's 1, and the upper limit is my variable x, which matches the variable in the derivative. And my integrand function is 1 over z. So what I have is I have an accumulation function. My accumulation function is the function that is the integral from 1 to z, sorry, from 1 to x, of my integrand function 1 over z. Now my integrand function has one discontinuity. The only discontinuity it has is at 0. And so this is continuous on the interval 0 to infinity. And my value 1, where my integral starts, is inside of this interval. And so what we're calculating is we're calculating a derivative of an accumulation function, which we know from the fundamental theorem of calculus is the integrand function evaluated at x. Our integrand function was 1 over the input, and so our derivative is 1 over x. Now let's do it again to the next function. I, I've defined an, an accumulation function, which in this problem is an integral from negative 2 to x of the integrand function z to the 2 thirds over z squared plus 4. And so my, my integrand, the rate function, is just this z to the 2 thirds over z squared plus 4. Now, because this function has a denominator that's never equal to 0, and a cube root's defined everywhere, this function is continuous everywhere. And so my, my uh, function, my accumulation function, is actually defined on that very same interval. Okay, so we're taking the derivative of an accumulation function, which by the fundamental theorem of calculus, so we're using the fundamental theorem of calculus when we say that the derivative of a is the integrand function evaluated at the input. And so for this example, that was the input raised to the two-thirds divided by the input squared plus four. That is the derivative of my accumulation function. For our next example, we have the derivative of an integral where the limits are 0 to x squared. Now this is similar to the previous problems in that my lower limit is a constant, but it's different in that my upper limit is actually a formula. So there's a tip at the top. If the limits of integration involve formulas, we need to interpret this as a composition so that we'll use the chain rule. So first we're going to think about my integral in the context of an accumulation function. So 
So here I've written my accumulation function. Now notice what's the same and what's different. I have the same integration, or the same integrand. I have the same starting value of 0. But the thing that's different is my problem had x squared, and accumulation function always has to have the input variable. So I can't put x squared here to define my, in, my uh, accumulation function. Now, by the idea of composition, what we do is we recognize that what we're actually taking a derivative of is the accumulation function evaluated with an input of x squared. Okay, so what we're doing is we're thinking this x squared is being plugged into this formula so that I put an x squared in my upper limit. I'm not actually defining the function with an x squared. Now the reason that we do that is that the fundamental theorem of calculus, so the fundamental theorem of calculus tells us the derivative of our accumulation function is the integrand function, x squared plus 4. Here we're evaluating my um, derivative at x. But because the problem involves the chain rule, the chain rule tells me that I take the derivative of the outer function, evaluated at the same input as where I started, but then I multiply it by the derivative of the input, which is 2x. And so I get 1 over my input, x squared squared, plus 4. I'm not done yet, but what I've done is I've evaluated the derivative function at x squared, so this x in the derivative is replaced by x squared, that's the a prime of x squared, and I'll multiply by 2x to give me a grand final formula of 2x over x to the fourth plus 4. And that will be the derivative of this integral. Now, just a reminder, I'm not doing the derivative of an accumulation function. I'm doing the derivative of a composition with the accumulation function. For the final example, notice that, again, I'm taking a derivative of a definite integral where my limits involve the variable. But notice this time, my lower limit is actually a formula, as well as the upper limit is a formula. So the fundamental theorem of calculus only applies to simple accumulation functions. So I could think of an accumulation function, a of x, that's got to be an integral from some constant to x. Uh, we could pick any constant as long as we make sure that we're continuous, there are no problems, so we can pick anything we want. With the same integrand, so z times sine of z dz, this is an accumulation function, and the fundamental theorem of calculus guarantees that that function we just defined has a derivative where I evaluate the integrand at x. Now, what we need to do is we need to go back to our question, and we need to think about how, how can I write uh, that integral as a composition with my accumulation function. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to use a splitting property. So let me write that. This is a splitting property of integration. So we're going to be taking a derivative. And instead of a single integral, I'm going to integrate from 0 to the upper limit. That was e to the 3x of my integrand. I'll just write f of z dz to keep it simple. And I need to subtract the integral from the same 0 to my lower limit, which was x squared, f of z dz. So this is the splitting property. What I've done is I've changed the integral into the difference of two integrals with a common starting point. 
What that allows me to do is I can now recognize that I'm taking the derivative of my accumulation function evaluated at e to the 3x minus the accumulation function evaluated at x squared. So, by the difference property, what I can think of is I'm actually taking the derivative of a of e to the 3x, and I'm subtracting the derivative of the accumulation function evaluated at x squared. Now, I'll use the chain rule twice, and that's a prime at e to the 3x times the derivative of e to the 3x minus the accumulation's derivative at x squared times the derivative of x squared. Now the fundamental theorem of calculus tells me that my accumulation function's derivative is the input e to the 3x times the sine of the input which is e to the 3x and then I multiply by the derivative of e to the 3x from the chain rule. That's not new. And then I'll subtract the accumulation function's derivative of x squared, which is the input, x squared, times sine of the input, x squared. And then from the chain rule up above, I still have times 2x. So from now just arithmetic or algebra, I have 3 e to the 3x times e to the 3x is e to the 6x sine of e to the 3x. And I'll be subtracting 2x cubed times the sine of x squared. And that will be my final derivative. So just to recap, what we're doing is we're recognizing functions where I have a constant as the lower limit and my input variable as the upper limit. Those functions are accumulation functions. And the fundamental theorem of calculus says that the derivative of an accumulation function is the integrand evaluated at the input. When I have more complicated integrals, I need to think about them in terms of my original problem. So here I thought of it using the splitting property as a difference of the accumulation function so that I can use the chain rule and the fundamental theorem of calculus to find my derivatives.